This is not a should you pull video. This is a plea. You should pull Bianca Stigmata, and here's why. Bianca Stigmata belongs on the physical team and is considered a Gen 2 attacker, a name given by the player base to all the attackers with time lag calculation. Time lag calculation simply means that the stage timer will pause during signature moves, allowing a character to dish out a ton of damage in an instant. Since Bianca is the first attacker to have this ability, she's an absolute powerhouse that puts all other attackers to shame. After a long two-year campaign, Lucia Crimson Abyss can finally take a rest. Not even her future leap skills can outdamage Stigmata. In fact, the addition of Bianca makes the physical team into one of the best squads in PGR, making her a fantastic investment. Not only that, the ideal physical team is relatively affordable. Bianca's allies are Rosetta Rigger and Liv Luminance, The Luminance will later be replaced by Elisa. During Bianca's patch, Across the Ruined Sea, a new reward system will debut that includes a free S-Rank Selector. This S-Rank Selector is permanently available and you can use it to get Rosetta for free. Liv Luminance is one of the oldest characters in PGR, and because of that, many players already have her. However, if you're new, you can get her for free from the beginner S-Rank Selector. When Elisa debuts around June 2024, she can also be earned for free. Collect her Inver Shards through Dorm Dispatch tasks, and she can be yours without spending a single black card. That makes the meta physical team easy to obtain for free-to-play players, and a good investment for spenders. And during her debut is the fastest and easiest time to get her. Not to mention, both Liv Luminance and Rosetta Rigger's Inver Shards can be obtained through the Battle Pass, and also by spending trade vouchers. However, if you're watching this in the future and missed out, it is possible to get her for free through a new system that will be added to PGR around July 2024. We'll cover that in more detail in a future video, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Bianca Stigmata has a transforming weapon, and because of that, you'll find yourself bouncing between staff form and sword form. She'll be in staff form by default, but by pressing the signature move button, she'll enter sword form. And then the second time you press the signature move button, she'll do a proper signature move. Depending on which form she's in, you'll want to play her a little bit differently. In staff mode, her signal orbs will only fill up her core passive gauge when used during her simulated matrix. In sword mode, she doesn't have any orbs to spend at all. But wait, doesn't that make her difficult to play? <laughs> Luckily, no. Bianca is built a little differently from the other constructs. An extreme dodge will not allow Bianca to enter Matrix like most other characters. In staff mode, Bianca can create her own Matrix on command when you hold down the dodge button. Speaking of Matrix, this patch also debuts a new feature, which is that entering Matrix will prevent most forms of incoming damage. So hopefully that will reduce some of the pain points of the game. I'm all about the goody-goody character having an evil-looking alter ego, so she's 100% right up my alley. While she unfortunately has no free blueprint coatings, she does have some extremely impressive styles to choose from. The one she debuts with is RC only, so you can technically get this snowy one for BC, but it's a lot of BC. That or 500 rainbow cards. Not convinced? Maybe this will change your mind. And when you're here, I can't help but wonder how nice it'd be if time would stop. No matter the case, you should pull for Bianca Stigmata. But of course, doing so comes with both pros and cons. The pros. Even at her base rank and with a 5-star weapon, she's the strongest physical attacker for the foreseeable future. The other members of Bianca's team can be obtained for free. Because of her longevity in the meta, she's a construct worth investing in, such as for her signature weapon, or even to get her to double S3 or higher if you're a spender. 
And of course, she's an absolute sight to behold and incredibly fun to play. Now for the cons. While you don't need her signature weapon, it speeds up the time taken to fill her gauge and allows her to do her sword waves immediately after entering sword mode, which in turn raises the fun factor of playing her. This will set you back around 7500 BC, give or take, depending on your luck. Similarly, evolving Bianca to double S3 and triple S rank will allow her to fill her core passive gauge faster, allowing her to do more damage more quickly. However, this level of investment is not required by any means. She's still incredibly strong and fun to play at double S rank, which you can get her to for free with Phantom Pain Scars. In my opinion, she's still extremely fun to play, even without her signature weapon and only an S rank. So in short, Bianca Stigmata is amazing, and the worst thing about her is you'll probably want her signature weapon too. Bianca Stigmata is one of the best characters in PGR and is rivaled only by a small handful of characters. And you can find out precisely who in this video, where we rank every single S rank Omni frame of the past, present, and future. Bianca Stigmata continues the important trend of physical attackers having sword waves. And that's all that really matters, right? <laughs>